Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Amanda Meyer, and I'm the marketing coordinator. Today, Joe Pettit, who is one of our senior training and technical support specialists, will be covering change orders. Before we get started, we have a couple housekeeping items. All lines have been muted, and we will answer questions after the webinar. To ask a question, enter them into the question window. Joe, next slide. Thank you. I will be sending an email after the recording with the, with the link to the recording. The recording will also be available on demand on our website. When the webinar will end today, there will be a pop-up window with three questions for a survey. We'd love your feedback. Don't forget to sign up for the tapered installation webinar on June 11th. Thank you very much for joining again, and Joe, let's get started. Thank you, Amanda. Today, I'm going to discuss the basics of a new way to do change orders in the edge. Although I'll use a drywall job for the example, the same steps apply for roofing or any other trade. We've always had a way to handle change orders, but this method makes it easy to change prices, productions, wages, and markups without creating separate scenarios. In the past, we handle change orders by creating a separate scenario or section. Here is one example of the old way we handled change orders. By having a separate scenario, the markups can change from the original bid, but be consistent for all the change orders. Each change order can be separate in a separate section, and this method still works, but now I'll show you a new way. Here I have a completed job. Once I set this job up for change orders, the original bid becomes permanently checked in. The only way to make changes to it will be through change orders. Each change order can have the same or different markups, wages, prices, or productions from the original bid. This new way requires using the cloud for your bids. Since the change orders will become part of the original contract scenario, I recommend copying the original contract first in case you ever need to see what the job was before any changes were added. Let's do that now. I'll go ahead and do a copy and insert of the scenario, check all the boxes, and then I'll rename it. Original contract plus change orders. I save it. There's a couple other steps I have to make before I can start using it for change orders. First, I have to make sure there's no errors in the project. So this little green status window must be green and not red. I also have to have the scenario checked in. So I'll click the check in box. The last thing I have to do to set it up for change orders is to open the scenario properties and check the change order box here, use change orders. Let's read what it says. By checking this checkbox, you are enabling change orders for this scenario. Once enabled, modifications to the scenario can only be accomplished through a change order. This setting is irreversible. So you want to make sure you really want to do this and you've made any changes to that project before doing this. I hit the confirm button and I hit save. Notice that under the collaboration tools, instead of saying checkout like it did in the past, now it says change orders. And this is the window or the door that I use to get into my change order screen. When I click this, 
it takes me in to the change order screen. I'm going to add a change order. I come up here and I click new change order and then I give it a number and a name. So I go ahead and title this change order. I like to give it a number to make sure that I can keep track of this thing easily later on. Now this is the change order screen. You'll notice over here my title appears. It says pending. Here's the before number. Here's the current number which happens to be the same. And here's the change number. They're all zero because I haven't made any changes to the change order yet. I haven't done anything with it. Here's my little checkout box, and this is where I check out the change order, similar to the way you check out a scenario to go ahead and make changes to it. So I check out the change order, and then it moves me through the sections and the pages just like it normally would in a normal job. I can double click on this. Now I'm in sections. I can move to pages and I move to conditions. Now what am I seeing here? What I'm seeing is my original bid with all of the conditions that are part of that. For this particular change order, I'll use one of the conditions that are already in the bid and I'll use a new one that are not current that is not currently in the bid. So to do that, I'll copy one of the other ones without its quantities and I'll rename it and make a minor change to it. There we go. Now I've got my change order conditions that I need. I can move on to the drawing screen. In this case, I want to add a little bit to partition one over here in these rooms. And I also want to add that new partition that I just created. And there we go. When I go back to my condition list, I see the two conditions that I made changes to in green, showing that it's an addition to my project. Now let's see what the pricing screen looks like. When I come out to the pricing screen, I see everything that's in the current project in light gray. That's not editable. It just shows me what's there, but I can't make any changes to it. The bold numbers are coming from my change order. Since I copied an existing condition, the pricing from that condition came in also. Had I brought that condition directly in from the group database, whatever pricing was in the group database would be part of what you see out here instead. I'm not going to make any changes to the material, but I will make a minor change to the labor. So I come over to the labor screen and I see the same kind of thing where the light or grayed out numbers are not editable and the bold numbers are editable. In this case, I'm going to change the wage rate. And there we go. I can change productions or anything else I need to also. In this case, that's all I wanted to change. Next, I'll come out to the recap screen. Now, currently, the markups you see in the recap screen were the markups that were in my original project. But I need to change them for my change order. So I come in here and I make whatever adjustments I need to. Now, at the moment, the changes I've made to the wages as well as the markup changes that I've made are only for this change order. However, if I accept this change order, 
that will become the default for future change orders. So when I come back to my change order screen, I now see the numbers for my change order, and I'll check it in. So I can tell by looking at this screen that the change order is pending. I can see the before, I can see the current, and I can see the difference in the change. The green indicates it's an additive change as opposed to a deductive change. Now, I don't have to accept or decline this right now. I can just go ahead and add additional change orders and everything else. But in this case, I'm going to accept that. Now, once I do that, once I accept that, the markups and the wages that I set in that previous change order become the default for future change orders. Now let's add another change order. There it is. I've created my change order. Over here, as you can see, the numbers are still zero because I haven't done anything to it yet. The change order is still pending at the moment. After I'm done with this thing, then the numbers will change. To do that, I check out the change order, and then I move through my project the same way I did before. I double click on this, work my way to the condition list. Notice something about the condition list. That Partition 3 that I added in the previous change order has now become part of the project. It would not have done that had I not accepted it. But since I accepted that change order, it got incorporated into the original project. Now I'll go out to the drawing screen on the ceiling condition, and I'll deduct this ceiling area. There we go. I come back here. I can make a bunch of other changes, but that's all I really want to do for this change order. When I come, well, there is one other change I want to make. Not so much to the pricing. Notice the pricing and the quantities. Notice the quantities are negative numbers because it's a deductive change. I do, though, want to go over to the labor and since the labor brought in the previous change order's wage, I want to adjust that back down to the wage that it was uh, when this was originally set up. And there you have it. Coming out to my recap screen, I now see the numbers associated with this change order. I see the markups that came in from my previous change order. I'll leave them as is and go back to my change orders breadcrumb and check this change order in. Notice that the change numbers are in red because it's a deductive change as opposed to an additive change. And then I can go ahead and accept that also. I just have to remember that since I accepted that and since I had made the wage changes, the next change order I do will have that other change that I just made in this, and I'll have to adjust it back if I want it consistent with change order number one. Well, that takes care of this one. Let's take a look at a job that has more change orders in it. In this case, I've got my original contract, and then I've got my contract with the additional change orders in it. When I move forward to the change orders window, I see all the various change orders I have here. Notice this first one has been declined, so that is not part of my contract. The next one down 
is pending, that's not part of my contract either. Here are the numbers. Here is when I can accept or decline. The next one is a deductive change order. Everything is gray down here. That has already been accepted. This one is still pending. So the accept and decline options are still here. This one's been accepted. So everything's gray here. And this one's been accepted. One other thing I'd like to point out is down here at the bottom of this change order screen, this is where you see the running total of everything that has been accepted and has become incorporated into that original project now. And here I see the numbers associated with that. If I were to go back to scenarios here and I went out to the recap screen, I would see all of those change orders lumped together at my bottom end screen. Now currently, the only report you will see for change orders is the recap report. All other reports, consolidated, stocking, etc., include the entire project plus any accepted change orders. This is our first release for change orders. As we get more customer feedback, we intend to continue making improvements to this and other areas of the program. Well, that covers it for now. Back to you, Amanda. All righty. Thank you, Joe. And let's get started on some audience questions. Joe, the first question is from Tommy. And he asks, can you reverse accepting change orders? Can I reverse accepting change orders? The answer is no. So if you aren't sure about a change order, don't accept it. Just leave it in the in the in the created mode. But if you need to make changes that reverse that change order, you'll have to create another change order to do that. All righty. Thank you, Joe. And we have another question from Christopher. And he asks, if a declined change order is later approved, how do you change this or modify this? Great question. If a decline change order is later approved, how do you change it? You change it by creating enough, another copy of that same exact change order, give it a new change order number with the same information, and then accept that one. All righty. Thank you again, Joe. And thank, every, thank you, everybody, for joining. That's all of the questions today, and have a great day. Thank you very much.